Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Annette Hearns. I am the currently the officer in charge for Ochi in South Sudan. And we're really honored to have you all today and to have all of the listenership out there. We're marking World Humanitarian Day, and I'm going to hand over now to Madam Sarah Basolomnianti, who is our humanitarian coordinator, among lots of other roles. So we're honored to have her here today. So Madam Nianti, over to you. Thank you and welcome to all of the media houses who've taken the time to come out to have this briefing, but also thank you for all you've done over the years, including this year, 2022, in addressing the need for raising awareness on hum the humanitarian situation in South Sudan. Thank you for all you have continued to do because it does take a village, including the media. August 19 every year is marked as the day where we recognize the work of the valiant, compassionate, passionate, selfless people all over the world who carry out humanitarian action. They are volunteers, they are uh, staff, they are community members, they are victims of humanitarian distress themselves, they are people in need. Everyone around the world who lends their hand to help someone in a humanitarian crisis. The date of August 19th is set aside to honor you and to thank you primarily for all that you do in saving lives. August 19th was set aside because back in 2003, we had a horrific attack in Iraq and we lost 22 humanitarian workers in 2003. And that was when it was decided that because of that attack, we have to have a day every year to set aside where we remember that those who you don't see every day, those you may not even know, who sacrifice their lives to serve others, to keep others alive, that they should be recognized and they should be honored. Here in South Sudan, we have 8.9 million people in need of humanitarian assistance. And for humanitarian workers across this country, we have been targeting 6.8 million of them. Oftentimes, the work that they have to do, there's no funding for it. But whether there's funding or not, they are out there. They are in the field. They are in IDP camps. They are in host communities. They are across this country trying to intervene in the lives of those who are losing hope, who feel that there's nothing else that they can look to besides a humanitarian worker to help them. Unfortunately, these same people are killed. These same people are attacked. And most often, they are nationals, they're South Sudanese. They're not internationals. Oftentimes, the humanitarian workers that are killed are South Sudanese themselves, being killed by South Sudanese, who don't understand the fact that we should not be fighting humanitarians or attacking humanitarians. We should be fighting poverty and fighting all of the mega crises that affect the people of South Sudan. People of South Sudan are affected by climatic shocks, by flooding, and by drought. They are affected by subnational violence. They are affected by things that are beyond their control, including COVID, the pandemic, and other issues that they have nothing to do with. But these things affect them so badly. I would like to take this opportunity today to remind all of us that it takes a village to address the needs of the people in South Sudan. Some of you were with me this morning where I led the development actors, the UN development system in my capacity as resident coordinator and head of the UN development system this morning with the ministers of finance and foreign affairs I led a dialogue discussing the need for us to strengthen our development programming in South Sudan and I stress this because humanitarians work to save lives but it takes a village it's not only humanitarians that will solve the issues of South Sudan Humanitarians need for development actors to play their role, and we need for the development partnership between the UN development system and the government to be strengthened, to increase investments from the government and the UN and development partners, including the IFIs, the World Bank, the IMF, and African Development Bank, so that when we invest in development, the hopes are that humanitarian needs will go down. But there's a precursor, there's a prerequisite, and that is peace. Peace is also required. Peacekeeping and peace building. If we don't have peace, if we don't have social cohesion, if we don't have harmony at the household and community level, it will be very difficult to reach those who are in need of humanitarian assistance 
and it will be very difficult to have development programming strengthened across the country. World Humanitarian Day says it takes a village. It takes the peace actors. It takes the humanitarian actors. It also takes the development actors. The communities who are affected, we need you. We need you yourselves to play your role. We need you to keep your youth engaged and giving the right messaging not to get involved in subnational violence, not to be used as a tool for intercommunal conflicts. We need for communities to take responsibility as well to be able to say that we'll partner with you. You're saving our lives now, but as you save our lives, we'll want to also put our hand to the plow and work on our own empowerment, our own development. And I want to hail the women of Malakal who shared this message with me. I got this from Malakal. Women in Malakal told me directly, we don't want to depend on food. We don't want to depend on humanitarian assistance. We want to go back to our houses. We need peace so that we can grow our food, we can harvest and feed ourselves. It takes a village. It takes the mothers. It takes the fathers. The fathers should not be raping. The sons should not be raping. There should be no gender-based violence. Women should not be attacked. As humanitarian workers should not be attacked, women should not be attacked. Our girls should not be raped and devalued. The future of this country relies heavily on the young people. Not only is South Sudan the youngest republic, I would want to say it's probably one of the youngest countries we have in the world in terms of its demographics. And I thank UNFPA for reminding me of that this morning. You have almost 74% of this population that are under 30. It's a young country. And in that youthfulness, the youthfulness of ideas, creativity, innovation, this is a time for youth to positively engage in the future of this country. Humanitarian needs will continue to increase if we do not have young people involved in positive solutions to the problems, not as part of the problem. It takes a village. It takes every young person in South Sudan. It takes a village. It takes the government in leadership, taking responsibility for the humanitarian needs of the population. It takes a village. It takes the development actors. It takes a village. It takes the international NGOs and the local NGOs. It takes a village. It takes the donors, those who bring their funding, even though they have challenges in their own countries. Even though in their capitals, their taxpayers are telling them, spend your money at home because we have COVID and we have other pandemics and we have other issues affecting us. Yet they still sacrifice and they make sure that some of their money comes to South Sudan. It takes a village. It takes the UN in this peacekeeping mission. It takes the UN as a UN development system with the 21 agencies, funds, and programs that I lead. It takes the humanitarian actors, the over 249 humanitarian partners to our humanitarian response plan. It takes a village. It takes the youth I met in war this week, mm -hmm. the young women who spoke to me about how they are serving in the IDP camp, teaching youth leadership. It takes a village. It also takes those people who people have forgotten in places like Canal, in PG County, where I was last week, where I saw people who have to travel one day by canoe to get access to markets. It takes everybody. Every South Sudanese is necessary to solve the humanitarian situation in South Sudan. So my call is for everyone to play your part. Starting with the government, we're here to support you. Everyone needs to play their part. This country deserves the right to survive and thrive. The children of South Sudan deserve the right to dream and to hope and to have access to, to give balanced reporting to look at the issues confronting girls and boys and women and men, not the ones that are closest to you, but the ones that are furthest from you, the ones who you don't know, but the ones who you need to know. It takes a village. Thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues. So we, we pass around the microphone if there are any questions from within the group here in the room. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is John Agok. I'm a freelance journalist uh, working for Zuba Eco. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the assistance uh, led by the US President this year to humanitarian assistance in South Sudan. Would you kindly update uh, South Sudanese as uh, 
peace is in the process, but still there is a gloomy hunger and and and, and desperate people are actually crying out for help. So could you actually give us on that assistance to Africa and to South Sudan in particular? Thank you. Maybe take a couple of questions and then, yeah? Shall we take the next question? Wilfred, the colleague behind you is next. Yes, I'm calling from William Raya. The question goes like this. There are reports that South Sudan is one of the countries which is actually most unsafe for humanitarian workers. And I would like to know uh, what is building initiatives, as you talked about it, about uh, this building as a necessity. Uh, what these uh, building initiatives uh, are being incorporated uh, into uh, various uh, humanitarian uh, programs as a way actually to, to address their needs. Secondly, you have been visiting uh, uh, some uh, parts of war board and, uh, and unity. Rather, don't like Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, recently you have just been uh, visiting some areas in uh, in, in Jungle and, and other areas. And we previously actually uh, got reports that uh, war and uh, and and, uh, and and parts of unity. That's where. Uh, in particular, 